Hey y'all, insight number two here. Um, talking of Proverbs chapter 3 verses 13 to 20 and then chapter 4 verse 7 because it just goes together. Um, wisdom is most precious. Isn't that the truth? And how many people do you know who have all the smarts in the world and like zero wisdom? Wisdom is most precious. No matter your educational level, wisdom is most precious. Because education and wisdom, not the same thing. Alright, uh, okay, so seek wisdom, it is most precious. We're looking at verses 13 through 20 here. Um, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the man that getteth understanding. Um, what better merchandise is there? It's better than silver or gold, is wisdom. Uh, it's more precious than rubies. Uh, the ways are pleasant of it, it's the tree of life to anyone that holds on to it. If you understand what true wisdom is, it is the, the, the goodness of life. You know what everything is, if you know what wisdom is. Um, and like in verse 19 it says, the, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. And then in 20, by his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. Now it's a poetic way of saying the Lord has a plan Trust in that, because this follows on from the whole trust in the Lord, lean not into thine own understanding. Okay, so this is the same chapter, just further on. But the the crux of it all, I think, really comes in chapter four, not only in the chapter heading, but then in verse seven. And this was one of my granddad's favorite because he's like, all these people out there just trying to get stuff, and they don't even get it. And all of their getting, they just don't get it. Um, and, and now I know what he's referring to because I too appreciate this verse. So verse 7 of chapter 4 says, Wisdom is the principal thing, like the thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So in all the things you're going to seek in the world, whatever that is, today I went and sought some company with some friends. I also went to the supermarket and sought a cooked chicken for my lunch. Um, later I will be seeking a comfy bed but in all of my seeking and in all of my getting get understanding get wisdom how do you do that because it's most precious so one of God's most precious gifts is wisdom how do you get understanding how do you do that um, wisdom is the thing we came here to gain that and knowledge part of this is having a mortal body so in having a mortal body and experiencing life, life is for living, that's how you gain understanding. If you don't understand something about someone else or something else and you don't get to experience that as part of your journey, you can either just accept it and uh, have that wisdom to say, look, I don't know the difference. I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to try and tell you how I'm going to live it. I'm just going to accept that that's your pathway and you get it and I love you for it. Um, and the other way is to, and I'm talking things about mental health, um, any sort of where you fall on a you know rainbow spectrum or any other spectrum. Like it just, we don't have to experience every mortal thing. Christ did, we don't. We need to experience our mortal journeys. But in all of that, there's so much wisdom to be had. And to understand when we go through something, to pick up the understanding of that experience, to ask all the questions, to find out the most we can about it, will help us to become that person of wisdom. Our wisdom that we can then help others with and share with others. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so with all the getting of things you do, get all the things that you do, get understanding, learn from good sources, learn problem solving, and how to truly work with Christ on your journey. Um, I'm going to go back to the example I use a lot because it's a very clear one for our day. Um, a very, very smart man that I used to work with at a university uh, who is chancellor of the university. He's very, very intelligent. He knows a lot and understands a lot about his specific field of like interest and qualification. So much so that our government will ask him in his opinion on different things. 
very nice man, orders something when I'm now working at a department store, orders something online, which I'm like, well, I've got time, I'm going to help with the online, you know, because... I don't like being well, I don't like being idle. I like to have work to do and I like to have things that I have purpose or I might as well just go home and put my feet up. So if I'm going to have to be here and work because you want me to be here until this time, then I want something to do. So I'm going to help with the online. And it comes through, he's ordered this thing and literally put the address as the University of... Mm, right? That's not an address. It had no numbers, no postcode or zip code if you're American. No, like, street. Um, and it's a big university. It would be like somebody saying to me, oh, my friend in, in Utah saying to me, send me a letter, just send it to BYU. And so I send it to her, um, da -da -da, name, uh, care of Brigham Young University. How are they going to know how to find her? I'm sure they would put extra effort into trying to find her. But how much work is it then going to cause for all all those people and the support roles that they don't need to do they could be spending on something else so while he's brilliant and while this man is absolutely brilliant in a lot of ways lacking that wisdom factor and that little bit of you know i've got all the book smarts but i don't have problem solving i um struggle to even know how to drive and you know some people aren't going to fit all of that they are just going to be in that realm of intelligence and that few topics and really not know how to do the day-to-day -day things so it's not that I'm mocking him or making like a bad example of him I'm just using that to show you that you can have all the intelligence in the world it doesn't equate to wisdom you could have no formal education and still be wise that is a completely different thing so wisdom is the most precious thing no matter what your education is what your area of expertise is wisdom is something that comes with time and through life experience um, and it's about that journey with Christ again so uh, Elder James E. Talmadge now this is deep so bear with because and I'll post it as well so you better read it but I, I just saw this like when I was looking for quotes and I was like that's definitely Elder Talmadge because that is that's a thinker um, but he's very true and if you like want to sit there and like just soak it in which is what his work is really designed to do, it's going to make a lot of sense to you as well. So, knowledge is to wisdom what belief is to faith. One an abstract principle, the other a living application. Not possession merely, but a proper use of knowledge constitutes wisdom. So it's not just having the knowledge, it's how you use it. It's not just having the education, it's how you use it. It's not having no education. If you have no education, you can still decide to have wisdom and to make good choices and to learn things. You don't have to have a degree on the wall to be wise. Mm. That's really cool. And I think that God really pointing that out and Christ really pointing that out, wisdom is most precious. And all of your getting, get understanding, get wisdom. All right got that one. We're going to go over to Proverbs 15 and I'll see you there.